Hello, hello, my name is Callista and welcome to a video update and first things first, Happy New Year! I hope everyone has a wonderful 2022 because let's be honest, 2020 and 2021 did not, uh, did not really go according to plan. They were not great years, so, um, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully it won't be three years of bad luck. Hopefully 2022 will be good. Now then, this video update is one of my six month reviews. Every six months, I kind of like to go over where the channel has been, where the channel is going, kind of look over my goals and see if I'm achieving them. Now, as is, as is becoming uh, customary for my, uh, my updates, I do have a drink. Normally I'd try something new, however, 2021 was a really bad year for me, so I figured I deserved something nice. So I have my drink of choice here. This is uh, Brothers Toffee Apple English Cider. This is my favourite, uh, my favourite cider. I love it. If you ever see this in the supermarket and you think to yourself, mm, you know, do I want to try that? I would. I would absolutely recommend this. This is beautiful. So, uh, cheers. Oh my god, that's good. This is... This is beautiful. A lot of ciders taste... It tastes kind of sour, to be honest. And this, it has a tartness to it, but it's not... It's not overpowering. It tastes super crisp and... and Whoops! I, I've only, I've only had about yay much of this. I'm. This is too soon into the drinking to be stumbling over my words. Jesus, Callista. Um, yeah, it tastes super crisp and fresh, and the toffee flavoring. Like I don't know why, but when people do like toffee apple flavored like gins or liqueurs. The toffee always tastes really burnt, in my opinion. It's not a nice flavour. However, with this, they got it just right, and it adds such a nice sweetness. And it's not cloying or overpowering. It's just kind of there in the in the aftertaste. And it is. I, I need to take another sip. Mm. It's so beautiful. It is a genuinely beautiful tasting cider. Mm -mm. Save you for later. Now then also, if you if you see me looking down into the side, this is where my notes are. <laughs> uh, I've literally one of my top notes. This year was ass because it was. This was an absolutely awful year for me. It was it was really bad. 2020 2020, it, it didn't go according to plan, but nothing particularly bad happened to me personally. It was a bad year because it was a bad year for the world. Hundreds upon thousands of people were dying every day and every, everyone was miserable. It was a bad time for the world. However, nothing bad really happened to me personally. But this, this year, 2021, um could quite easily say this is in uh, one of my top three worst years I've ever experienced uh, in my uh, my 26 years of life. Um, uh, if you if you were not aware, uh, my grandmother died on Valentine's Day. My cat died on uh, September 10th. And it just... I've, I've been very lucky. I haven't really had many family members die in in living memory at least so to to have two meaningful deaths in a year that that is a lot for me I know it's like two that's not a big number but like I said I've been very very lucky and um yeah yeah them them dying it was it was awful it's I, I don't know if this will sound bad. I think the, the the one that hit me the hardest was my cat. Not because I didn't love my grandmother or I loved my cat more. No, that's that's not what I'm saying. But I didn't witness my grandmother's death. 
I wasn't there when she died and according to my mom who who was with her it was a very peaceful death she was sleeping and she kind of gave one one final gasp and then she was gone it was very quick it was very painless and I could take a lot of comfort in knowing that my grandmother was now at peace and she had a dignified death and to be to be very honest my my grandmother was not a well woman for the past 10 years or so every time something happened we we prepare ourselves we think this is this is it she's going to go and every time she'd be like nope not until I fucking say so I'm not going and she, she was a battle axe. She was a complete battle axe. She was a wonderful woman. Um, she, she actually got COVID in 2020. And again, we prepared ourselves. We were like, this, this horrible illness is claiming the lives of people who are much younger and fitter than she is. Like, she, she has no chance. But again, she was like, nope, it ain't my time yet. I'm not going. She, uh, she kicked its ass. She, she could not kick the ass of sepsis. However, she that that was one battle that she she couldn't fight. But as I said, it was a, a quick death, and it was painless, and she she had her dignity, and I could take a lot of peace in that, in knowing that. With my cat, I was there for when he died, and he had a seizure. It was not peaceful. It was not calm in the slightest. It was not dignified. Um, I, I don't know if this sounds cruel, because his, his, my cat, he was he was fourteen years old, and for the vast majority of his life, he was a very healthy little cat. We never really had any major complaints or conditions that we had to deal with. He was he was really healthy, and then in the last. It, won't, it wouldn't even be a year. In the last maybe eight months, he just went very quickly downhill. His, It was like he lost his personality because he was, for such a little cat, he had a huge personality. A really huge personality. He was an asshole. He was a dick. And I, I say that with affection because he was my dick and I loved him. I loved him ever so much. And yeah, he... It was like his personality just went. He was just laying around all the time and he stopped meowing. He was a very vocal cat and he just got so quiet. And so we, we knew something was up. We took him to the vet. They were like, there's nothing we can find that's wrong with him. You know, just he's old, leave him be, blah, 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 all of that. And I remember I was, I was upstairs and I suddenly heard him yowling yowling like I I hadn't heard him yowl in months and I just knew I was like he's going he's going so I ran downstairs my parents were there and um I <laughs> I'm laughing not because I find him dying funny but because it was it was kind of like he got his personality back in his last few moments he strode into the middle of the room and just like, oi dickheads, look at me, I'm going. I'm like, I'm waving you all goodbye. I'm out, fucking pay attention. It was, it was very him. It was very him. But he, he strode out into the middle of the floor. He, um, he peed himself, which he's never done. And he collapsed on his side and he started seizing. And I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, not him going by a seizure. That's not what I mean. It's, I, I should have been there with him. I was with him from when he was a very young cat. So it's only right that I saw him out. Does that make sense? It was, it was the right thing for me to be there with him. But seeing him like that, I think it hit me a lot harder than I expected because it seizures are not pleasant to watch 
like I said, they're not... Like, if something is dying, then you hope it'll be quick and painless and seizures are anything but quick and painless. It was a very violent way for him to go. And I... I think the thing I'm going to remember is his face because his his eyes got really wide and they were they were kind of glazed over so I, I I don't think he was really seeing anything but his eyes got really wide and his lips kind of pulled back so you could see all his his teeth it was kind of like a um, I describe it as like a Cheshire cat grin a very morbid Cheshire cat grin and it it, it hurt. It was painful to watch, and I, at the time, I didn't think it had really affected me. However, in the months since, I kind of realised, oh no, oh no, that has had an effect. That, um, that was not pleasant. Mm. It, um, it was hard. It was, it was very hard having those two deaths. That's not to say all of 2022, no, <laughs> excuse me, all of 2021 was bad. My my boyfriend came to England to visit. We got engaged. So that was, that was lovely. It's just that, unfortunately, the, uh, the bad events kind of outweigh the good, which is, which is a shame. But, you know, it, trying to look on the bright side, it wasn't an entirely bad year. There were there were pockets of sunshine amongst the clouds. Now then, onto the channel itself, the main series, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. We are almost finished with that. I would be highly surprised if that was still the main series by February. I think I get the feeling because I've I've just filmed up to the part. You you won't have seen this yet. But I filmed up to the part where I'm, I'm just about to get started on the class trial. Now, here's the thing. I do think this will be a longer class trial because it's the final. However, I, I still think maybe around January 20th, thereabouts, I reckon I'll be getting ready to start Inquisition. And I am very excited about that. I love Inquisition. I love Dragon Age. And here's the thing, I've, I've missed having an RPG on the channel. I am first and foremost a role player. That is the thing I love to do when playing games. And so it's, I've, you know, I've been kind of sad not having an RPG on the channel. So I'm very excited to get back to Dragon Age. Um, the secondary series, we just got started with Life is Strange, season one. And the, the plan for that, I'm going to play Life is Strange, Before the Storm, the farewell episode, and then I will be playing Danganronpa 2. Danganronpa, it was never meant to be a primary series, it was just because I finished Dragon Age 2 way earlier than I expected, and then I got the new computer, and I kind of ummed and ahed for a bit, and that's kind of why it ended up being a main let's play. So yes, Danganronpa will be going back into the secondary slot for Danganronpa 2. I should just warn you, I don't intend on playing... I I want to say it's called Ultra Despair Girls. I... That... It seemed to divert from the visual novel kind of feel that the main series had. It seems to be more of like an action shooter, which I, is not my genre at all. I'm quite bad at that, so... Yeah, it, it really didn't grab me at all. So yeah, I, I don't intend on playing Ultra Despair Girls. I also don't intend on playing the, um... Is it called School Mode? I know that once you finish uh, the main game of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc, that this new mode opens up and... From, from the little I've researched, it's that the students woke up early and they're having to build monokumas, something something like that, and you're also trying to get relationship points. It's basically like a dating sim, effectively. It's like Danganronpa, the dating sim. 
Um, I don't intend on playing that either. I just kind of want to play the main games for Danganronpa. Um, but yeah, so Life is Strange Season 1, Danganronpa 2, then I'll play Life is Strange Season 2, then I'll play Danganronpa 3. That is, that is the plan for the secondary series. I've, that's, that's going to take me ages. That plan will probably take me all the way into 2023 because the Danganronpa series, they're long games. They are really long games, so I could, like I said, I could easily see that plan taking me into 2023. And last, but by no means least, the weekend games. I am currently playing When the Night Comes. It is a visual novel dating sim. I love it. I really enjoy it, personally. There hasn't been very much interaction on that series, but like I said, I, I tend to play games for me first, so as long as I'm enjoying myself, then I'm happy. Um, After that... I'm kind of, there are a couple of games I want to play for the weekend series and I'm I'm not entirely sure which I'm going to go for first. The three that are, that's two, Callista, you, you know numbers, Callista, you know numbers. The three that I am most interested in is Contradiction, Spot the Liar, which is an FMV game. Next is The Dark Side Detective, which is a pixel art point and click adventure. It looks, it looks super cute. It looks very fun. And then in number three, in the third place, is Unavowed, which was made by the same people who made the Blackwell series, which again, I, I really enjoyed the Blackwell series. There are there are some places where I'm kind of like, oh, I wish they'd gone that way with the story rather than the direction they chose. But on the whole, I had a lot of fun with that series. So I'm I'm not entirely sure which order I'm going to play them in. But those are the three that I'm kind of choosing between for once I've, I've completed When the Night Comes. So if you have any thoughts, if there is a game on there that you'd really like me to play first, then please do do leave that in the comments below. Now then, goals for the channel. I always set myself some goals and I think it's high time we uh, we look at them, see how they're progressing. Um, the last time I did this, it would have been June 1st, and I said, the two goals I set for myself were I wanted to reach 180 subscribers by June 1st, 2022. On December 31st, 2021, I am currently at 333 at the time of this recording. I find that insane. I find that completely and utterly insane. Here, here are some statistics for you. Last year, this time last year, December 31st, 2020, I was at 47 subscribers. So over the course of a year, I have gained 286. On June 1st, 2021, I was at 94 subscribers, so in six months, I'm sorry if you heard that again, I banged my notepad, my apologies. So yeah, in the course of six months, I have gained 239. That is insane to me. I, I, YouTube shorts, man. <laughs> YouTube shorts, I, I salute you. I, I will take a sip in your honor. I, I did not expect that. I truly did not six months ago. Um, I, I, I kind of had this, um, like a, it was a goal, but it was like, I'm never gonna achieve this. There is not a chance in hell that I'm ever gonna achieve this. I wanted to see if I could reach a hundred subscribers by one year. And that, that was my year one goal. I was like, I think I can achieve this. But the next part I was like, no, not a chance in hell I'm gonna be able to do this realistically, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it in mind. I wanted to see if I could reach 100 subscribers by one year, 250 by year two, 500 by year three, 1000 by year four. I wanted to see if I could do that. And I've, it's not even the start of year two and I'm already over 250. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm blown away by that. I think that is amazing. So uh, let's let's update that subscriber goal. I guess I 
I'm tempted to say 500 by June 1st, but I... I'm gonna go for 450. I feel like, here's the thing, at this stage, I'm already way over my goal. I think I'm doing really well, so... If, if I could get to 450 by June 1st, I would be extremely happy with that. And thank you, thank you people out there, thank you for subscribing. I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, I think it's insane. I think it is insane that I've gotten to 333 a year and a half in. I, I, I like I said, I'm blown away. I'm simply blown away. My secondary goal, and this, this is sadly one that I did not achieve, I wanted to stick to my schedule. Originally, my schedule was uh, 10 full 30 minute videos every week. I lowered that to seven when I when I stopped having a secondary series. However, I I wouldn't necessarily call that, you know, not keeping up with my goal because I I said I was doing that. I, I said I was doing that. Whilst I was getting everything sorted with the new computer and all of that, I decided I'd go down to seven, seven videos a week. So that wasn't where I broke my schedule. That wasn't where I failed my goal. In December, uh, I had major technical difficulties. Daisy, Daisy who is still in the corner over there because she fucked me over, therefore she has to learn. Um, yeah, in late November, early December, Daisy died. Daisy just quit on me. She did not give me notice. She was just like, I'm out, you've not been paying me enough, Bye bye Um, and that really, that really screwed me over because I was, I was trying to collect clips for the Christmas compilation video, and I was trying to get Danganronpa done, and I had, I had all of these things going, and it just, I, this will sound really sad, I became so stressed trying to sort out new recordings, uh, going over old recordings, trying to get my computer set back up. I got so stressed that I forgot my cat had died. And that sounds real fucking sad. Basically, I'd I'd end a recording, I'd end whatever I was doing, and I'd think to myself, okay, breathe, Callista, everything's gonna be fine, you've got this, you can do this. Oh god, I'm so stressed, you know what, I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna pet my cat, I'm gonna check he's doing all right, and then I'm gonna start editing. And then I'd be halfway down the stairs and I'd think, you ain't gonna do any of that, because Bert's dead. So it, it, it was not a sustainable situation, something had to give, and ultimately I, you know, I had to go on a channel hiatus, I couldn't, I couldn't re-watch all of my content from this year whilst putting out new content. I simply couldn't. And it was it was stressing me out to the point that, like I said, I forgot my cat had died. That's that's a pretty big deal. Um yeah, I'm I'm glad I took the hiatus for my sanity. I'm sad I didn't meet my goal of, you know, sticking with my schedule. However, we can we can look at this in a positive way. I made it a year and a half keeping up with my schedule. I now have to beat that. I now have to beat a year and a half. I now have to get to two years without missing a single upload. That is that is my new goal. Also, yes, uh, today's life is strange. I only upload two videos a day. That is kind of my limit. So that will be coming up tomorrow instead of today. Alrighty then. Yes, I... <laughs> that is the end of my notes. That is the end of my notes. And where I where I started my notes with this year was ass, I have finished my notes with 2022 will be better. I hope it's better. I sincerely hope it is better. The world has suffered enough. We have all gone through two years of absolute bullshit and misery and it we're due with a change we are due with a change so uh again this is this is wonderful this is beautiful so yes i am i am keeping my fingers crossed for 2022 
it, for me personally, 2021 was so bad. I'm kind of like, it can only get better. It can only go up from here. So I, I'm concerned because I was hopeful at the end of last year. So I'm, I am slightly concerned about how 2022 will be, but I'm also, I'm, I'm trying to keep my chin up and, you know, think the best, think positive thoughts and all of that. So yeah, 20, 2022 will be better. We will make it better. And I hope you all, you, all of you lovely, lovely people have a wonderful new year. And yes, I do believe that is it from me. I will see you next time, guys. Have a wonderful day.